Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl every tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey everybody and happy Friday the 13th, honey. And can I get a thumbs up and a hand clap, honey, for the new intro? I'm definitely loving it. I had to get a new intro for the podcast because I love the green room intro so much. But anyhow, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good. It is Friday. We have been unpacking and just trying to get comfortable in this new house. Um, it's taken like a lot out of me. I'm just exhausted. Um, I took a nap earlier today. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a live stream soon um, once more things are together. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Nicki Minaj situation. If you guys do not know, she is currently trending all over Twitter and social media because she is now being sued by her husband, Kenneth Zupetti's rape victim. Okay, so let me say this before I even get into the whole story. Because a lot of people, it's, it's funny that other blogs and other podcasters can have Nicki Minaj as their fave. They can write things in her favor. They can be totally biased when it comes to her, and that's okay. But anybody else who just sees the bullshit for what it is, somehow you're picking on her. Uh, somehow you're on Cardi B's payroll and all this stupid shit. Now, it was about eight days ago that Kenneth Zupetti hit the news, Okay. TMZ and a lot of outlets ran with it that basically he struck a plea deal for failing to register as a sex offender. I didn't speak on it. I didn't post it on none of my social media pages. I didn't do a live stream about it. So this is not a Nicki Minaj hate channel or a Nicki Minaj bashing channel because if it was anything tied to Nicki Minaj, I would cover it and drag her and drag her husband. And that's not the case here. So miss me with the comments before y'all come with the bullshit about people being biased and mean and unfair towards Nikki. So what's going on with this situation, because I covered it a year ago, Kenneth Zupetti just decided out of the blue to move to California with his superstar wife, okay? But just because you're married to Nicki Minaj, that has nothing to do with past criminal convictions. He is a registered sex offender. And for him to move into this neighborhood in California and not alert the proper authorities, that is against the law. If this was anybody else, they'd be jailed. So let's keep that real. You cannot just move states or you can't even move up the street without filing official paperwork and letting the city, the police and all that know that there's a registered sex offender in the neighborhood. That's how that goes in any town USA. But he thought because he was with Nicki Minaj, he was somehow above the law. And at that point, he was charged back in March of 2020 after he moved to Cali and failed to register. The feds went after him. So this spiraled into what we have today. So he ended up getting arrested. And basically at that point, it is alleged that Nicki Minaj, her lawyer, and some of her goons started trying to reach out to the victim, Jennifer Hugh. And basically, the woman said that they try to offer her like $10,000, $20,000 to basically recant her case, recant what happened to her back in 1994. Now, if you guys remember, I had did a live stream about this a few months ago. She was being interviewed by a woman named Nosy Ho. And so I had used some of Nosy Ho's clips. And Jennifer was on there talking about the harassment, the things that she faced, how some guy named Ganks was coming at her. And then I was sent audio of Nicki Minaj shouting out Ganks in the studio. Okay, give me just a second to play you guys. So listen to this really carefully. After that phone call with Nikki, the only contact I had was from street goons. Um, I think she has somebody in her camp called Ganks. Um, he was contacting family members. Um, there was a lot of numbers as far as money uh, being offered, um, but it was never offered from Nikki and it was never offered from Kenny. Personally, it was just people speaking on behalf of Kenny. I okay, so let me remove this and then let me pull up this clip. This is what had my tin hat tingling because I'm like, 
Yanks. That name sounds familiar. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Gangs? Oh, yeah. No, gangs. Fuck Come here. Gangs. What? Yeah. Let me tell you what happened. TT. Gangs was a man. I know. Gangs, listen. Why? Me and TT was arguing the other day. No, Zoo and TT was trying to argue. Me and TT talking about if you ask anybody on the block, they would have known that that's, that, that's my piece that, like that like that like I'm, i was his piece <laughs> did not do it's not in a relationship with homeboy down the block yeah, or did you not really like that though. Wow. Wow. that shit wasn't really no, wow. it, listen look, look look you had a situation but it wasn't really respected like, why you gotta fight you for was a, mine. You no i was you not you no i was yeah. not yeah. i was you know what, gangs? Why is it, why he always been so a little bit a little bit crazy? So it showed a lot of validity to the things that Jennifer was saying. So as Jennifer went to tell her story, because again, Jennifer was anonymous; nobody knew who she was. Okay, it wasn't until Nicki Minaj's fans started digging as to who Kenneth Zupetti was, and once they found out that he had all these charges—not only rape, but murder and all types of crazy stuff. A lot of her fans were very upset. Her fan base was split. A lot of them felt like regardless of how long you've known him, he's not a good look for your brand. This is not who you want to be with. Other people felt like, well, if she's in love, let her do her. So it was a very mixed in the Barb fan base when she got with Kenneth. So then they ended up finding out who Jennifer was and they started harassing her. And, you know, she didn't really say anything back then until... The feds ended up contacting her about this whole situation with Kenneth Zupetti not registering. It basically tore a Band-Aid off of old wounds that happened to her back in 1994. So let me go ahead and read to you what the New York Times is stating about this entire situation. TMZ and a lot of major publications are also covering this situation as well. So it says here, a woman who accused rapper Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty, of sexual assault during high school filed a lawsuit on Friday against the couple alleging that they harassed and intimidated her while trying to convince her to recant her account. The case dates back to 1994 when Jennifer Hugh was 16 and reported to the police that Mr. Petty, a 16-year-old she had known growing up in Jamaica, Queens, had raped her after leading her into a home at knife point, the lawsuit says. Mr. Petty was arrested that day and was charged with first-degree rape and subsequently pled guilty to attempted rape. Kim Livingston, a spokesperson with the Queens District Attorney's Office, stated that he served about four and a half years in prison, according to the inmate records. According to the lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court for the, East, for the Eastern District of New York, Miss Hugh, who is now 43, and her family members started to receive communications from people claiming to be connected with Miss Minaj and Mr. Petty shortly after Petty was arrested for failing to register as a sex offender in California. The lawsuit alleges harassment, witness intimidation, as well as intentional infliction of emotional distress by Miss Minaj and Mr. Petty and seeks an unspecified amount of damages. It also alleges a sexual assault and battery case against Mr. Petty from the mid-90s case. A representative for Miss Minaj did not immediately respond to requests for comment. A lawyer for Mr. Petty named Michael Goldstein declined to comment on the lawsuit. The lawsuit says that the intermediary offered Miss Hugh $20,000 in exchange for signing a prepared statement recanting the accusation. At one point last year, the lawsuit says Miss Minaj called Miss Hugh saying that she heard that Miss Hugh was willing to help out. Days later, it says that Hugh and her family members received an onslaught of harassing calls and unsolicited visits from people she believed to be associated with the couple. They also go on to say Miss Hughes has not worked since May 2020 due to severe due to severe depression, paranoia, constant moving, harassment and threats from the defendant and their associates. The lawsuit said she is currently living in isolation out of fear of retaliation. According to the lawsuit, Ms. Hugh was on her way to school on September 16th, 1994, when she ran into Mr. Petty, a boy that she knew from the neighborhood. The lawsuit says that Petty held a knife to her back as he led her to, as he led her to a house around the corner where Ms. Hugh said he raped her. The suit says Ms. Hugh escaped and ran to her high school and told the security guards who caught the police. In an interview, Ms. Hughes said that the case was prosecuted. She faced harassment and retaliation in the neighborhood, prompting her family to force her to attend a court hearing for Mr. Petty and request 
that the charges be dropped, a request that was denied at the time the suit says. Mr. Petty had already accepted the plea deal. Ms. Hughes said in an interview that she left New York City, that she left New York City after the ordeal. For years, it remained in the past. I didn't think it would be something that would come back and slap me in the face 20 years later. But in 2008, Miss Minaj, a chart-topping rapper with a fiercely loyal social media following, okay, keep that in mind, posted about her relationship with Mr. Petty on Instagram and questions about his status as a sex offender surfaced. Miss Hughes said in an interview that she had spoken to YouTube bloggers to defend herself in response to an Instagram comment from Miss Minaj that stated that Miss Hugh and Mr. Petty had been in a relationship at the time of the assault and that Mr. Petty was younger than Miss Hugh. They were never in a relationship and they were the same age according to the lawsuit. After Mr. Petty was arrested in 2020, Miss Hugh reconnected with the childhood friend from Queens, the lawsuit says, and told him she wished it could all go away forever. Miss Hughes said that that friend replied, I can make that happen. The lawsuit says that a few days later, the friend told Miss Hugh that Miss Minaj asked for her phone number and that the rapper later called her and offered to fly Miss Hugh out to Los Angeles or her publicist out to Miss Hugh. Miss Hugh said she declined and told the rapper, I need you to know woman to woman this happened. The lawsuit says that there was a series of encounters where Miss Hugh or her family members were offered inducements if she would recant. 500000 at one point, 20000 at another, with a proposed bonus that Miss Minaj would send a birthday video to Miss Hugh's daughter and Miss Hugh said she declined. Miss Hughes said in an interview that she, that she never expressed interest in a bribe and was adamantly against recanting her story. If I lie now and say that I lied then, do you know what I'm going to say to my two little girls or even my sons? Miss Hughes said in an interview that at one point she told the intermediary that the $500,000 was not good enough. She said she's been trying to deflect the conversation not to express interest in a bribe. Tyrone Blackburn, okay? Y'all remember him. He's the same guy from the T.I. case, who has a lot of women who are now filing sexual harassment uh, lawsuits against T.I. So Tyrone Blackburn, a lawyer representing Ms. Hughes, says that Ms. Hughes' comment was an effort to dissuade the intermediary from thinking she would accept anything. At one point last fall, the suit says that Ms. Hughes was contacted by a lawyer for Mr. Petty, who asked her about a recantation letter in response to threatening calls and her own growing paranoia. The suit says that Miss Hugh moved three times in one year. I feel like I'm living in secret, she said in the interview, like I can't tell people my exact location. So that is the article. And I want to go ahead and show you guys why it's hard for me to feel bad for Nikki or look at her as a victim of circumstances in this situation because Nikki involved herself when she didn't have to. At the end of the day, a man is going to tell you anything, especially when pillow talking. Of course he's innocent. Of course it's not what it seems. So he can tell her anything, but at the end of the day, Nicki Minaj was not there. So for her to take to social media and act like she knew the case in and out when that wasn't the situation makes her look bad. So what she is saying in that lawsuit is that Nicki Minaj was the one basically trying to spread rumors that she was white, that she was an older woman, almost trying to low-key make it seem like a quote-unquote Emmett Till situation. You know, the white woman who lied and said that Emmett Till whistled at her and then Emmett Till was, you know, beaten and killed and everything else. Yes, this situation is not as extreme, but that is the picture that Nicki Minaj was trying to paint. And matter of fact, here's the receipt. A lady named Anna Doss says, wait, y'all are calling this man a rapist, but it happened in 1994, meaning he was 16 or 17 and the girl was 16 years old. Must have been a white girl. Then Nicki Minaj comes in the comments, okay? And she says, at Anna Doll, he was 15, she was 16, in a relationship, but go off internet. Y'all can't run my life. Y'all can't even run your own life. Thank you, boo. So again, trying to discount her age and say that they're in a relationship when that was not the case. But then she took it one step further. So if you guys remember, it was a short time later in February 2020 when Nicki Minaj went off on Wendy Williams because Wendy Williams was talking about the situation. And Wendy Williams was basically being critical of Nicki Minaj's husband. And she talked about his criminal past and she called him a killer and a sex offender. So at that point, Nicki Minaj went off on Queen Radio. So go ahead and check out this receipt right here. As well as 
something that he was wrongfully accused of doing when he was 15 years old. Well, because he didn't have $7,000 to get himself bailed out. Because when you in the hood at 15, you don't have that kind of money, and neither does your family. And when the alleged accuser wrote a, a, a letter to the judge asking to take it, take the, recant these statements, she was told that she would go to jail for 90 days, allegedly, if she recants the statement. But white is right. But white is right. But white is right. So y'all just heard her in that audio say, but white is right. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.